I worked on a Cessna aircraft circuit board a few days ago. This one right here. And you know what happened? Nothing. I posted a video a few days ago working on the circuit board. It was sent to us by an aircraft parts company. We have other boards for them. And people in the comments wrote, a lot of comments, people wrote, you cannot work on this board. You have to be FAA certified to work on this board. You have to be EASA certified to work on this board. You're going to be liable if that aircraft falls. Insurance is going to follow you if something happens. You're going to be fined. You're going to be put in jail. And comments went on and on and on and on. And not a single person knew what he was talking about. We are at this time and age where everybody knows everything. A person want to argue with his doctor on how to do his job. A person want to argue with the plumber fixing his bathroom. It should be done this way and not that way. A person want to argue with his electrician. Why are you running the wire from inside the wall and not from outside the wall? We get a GPU in to fix, and the person wrote in the comment or wrote in the description. I know it's one capacitor that's causing all the issue, and I know it's an easy job for you. How do you know? Even if it's an easy job for me, how do you know that capacitor is what made that board fail? The person want to tell me how to do my job. Let me explain. Aircraft circuit boards or power supplies or display panels or whatever the case may be, anybody can work on them. Even the person who owns the aircraft can work on it. I can work on it. If you know how to solder, if you know how to troubleshoot circuit boards, you can work on it. Anybody. You can work on it in your basement. You can work on it in your shop. A lot of boards get sent out to shops that know how to solder and know how to troubleshoot a motherboard. But one thing, the motherboard cannot go back in the aircraft or the airplane until it's signed off and approved by an authorized FAA certified shop or EASA certified shop. Anybody can work on it, but this cannot go in the aircraft unless it's signed off. A certified person will look at the board. Let me check. Is that component correct? Is that component soldered on properly? Whatever they do, once they sign it off, then the board can go in the aircraft. If I fix this, the person cannot just take it and put it in the aircraft. It does not work like this. What if something happens in the future? The aircraft has issues because of the work that we did. It's not on us. It's on the person who signed this off. The person's job is to make sure everything is correct, the parts are correct, the soldering is correct, and whatever they do. Once they sign it off, they are liable if something were to happen to that board. So just information for you. Anybody can work on the board, but it cannot go in the aircraft unless it's signed off by a certified workshop. And a simple search on ChatGPT. Yes, anyone can physically work on an aircraft circuit board, but only a certified person or repair station can approve it for return to service. And there's more also. Uncertified individuals or shops can repair, troubleshoot, or modify components like avionics circuit boards, display panels, motherboards, power supplies. However, once the repair is complete, the component cannot be used in a certified aircraft until it's inspected, tested, and approved by an FAA certified repair station, signed off by a certified technician under FAA or EASA regulations. So now that we got this out of the way, let's focus on the board and continue where we left off. If you recall from the last video, you can go ahead and watch it. I'll leave a link down in the description. We had a blown chip and we need to replace this blown cap. We already ordered the caps and I already ordered the chip. And like I said, we have multiple boards for this company. Let's go ahead and start the repair. In the last video, I believe we measured the resistance here and we found that this component is good, 100 kilo ohms. If we compare it with this one here, 100 kilo ohms. If we compare it with this one here, 100 kilo ohms. And if we compare it here, 99.100 kilo ohms. Okay? So the only thing that we need to replace right now is the cap 
and the chip. Let's go ahead and do it. One thing I noticed inspecting the board, we do not have enough solder here. I do not see enough solder here. I do not see enough solder here. I mean, what standards is the aircraft following? The pin is probably making a connection and a very good connection. But if you look here, we have enough solder, enough solder, enough solder, but this one we do not have enough. Maybe I'll just brush over it. We're going to add nf.flux. Why am I making my job harder, right? Let me apply low melt solder. Because I always mention low melt solder is magic. We have nf.flux applied on the board. And I went over this, how this flux is one of the best that you will ever get your hands on. It works extremely well under heat. It doesn't evaporate quick. No odor, long shelf life. And it's just amazing in every way. We can do this also, why not? I mean, the holes are already clean, but why not? That's what happens when you try to take a shortcut, you end up going back to it and spending twice the time. Just do it right the first time, do not take shortcuts. I did not take a shortcut, it's a two layer board, but it's easier when done with low melt solder. And now we see that pin that was broken off inside, right here. And we just need to push it out or we need to take it off from the other side. But let me continue with the rest. The initial video I posted, I thought that we had a broken pad and we had a via, but this is a through hole chip. We do not need to restore any pads from the front because the only trace the pin connects to is on the back here. There's nothing in the front. So we do not need to restore any traces. magic of low melt solder. All right, and the pin is out. Right there. It's a tiny piece left that broke off from the chip. Now, if you look here, the pad that broke off from the front, the pin only connects from the back. It connects from right here. Okay. It connects here and it goes here. That's our blown cap. It's connected via those two through holes that you see here. And if we flip the board, it connects to the wire right here. And therefore, if A equals C and B equals A, then A equals B, right? When we solder the chip, we should have continuity between here and here, between here and here, and between here and here. Let me grab the chip. And if we look here, the chip that we ordered is exactly the same chip. This is not a replacement. This is not something that compares. It's exactly the same chip. Right, and the job is done. We did an amazing job. Now the pad that has more solder on it than the rest is the one that was affected. Solder is not gonna flow like the rest because this pad was damaged from front of the board and copper was exposed from here. So solder tends to flow to copper that's exposed on the bottom. That's okay. But the soldering on the chip is amazing. Let's flip the board. Look at the chip and look at the soldering. Look at how solder made its way all the way to the top to the pad, except for this one here. But the pad on top is not making a connection with anything. The pad is making a connection from the bottom. 
And as I mentioned earlier, the connection that's being made from the pin to bottom of the pad is connecting to this wire and this wire is connecting to this pad. So if we measure from here to here, we should get a continuous path. And if we measure from here to here, we should get a continuous path. Meter in continuity mode. And let's measure. Make sure the pin is making a connection. We're gonna measure from here to here, you see? And we're gonna also measure from here to right here. Okay, now I added solder on this resistor from the back. So solder is flowing all the way to the front and we can also go over this pad here. It doesn't look too good. Right and beautiful. Let's remove the capacitor, replace it. The Northridge Fix NF dot flux. We're gonna use low melt solder. And we're gonna push down on the pins. Okay, and the cap should already be out. If not, then we can pull it. Oh, here. Right there. See? Look at this nice little blown orange cap. Bye-bye. Right, so I got the cap right here and the long lead is positive. So we're gonna put it like this. And we're going to solder from the back. And once we are at the back, we can bend the pins slightly so the cap can hold. Okay. Let's check the front. Very nice. Let's cut. And we're gonna cut right here. Right, and let's check. And perfect. And now if we check the front, you can see how solder made its way all the way to the front. Amazing. We did an amazing job. We soldered the chip right here. We soldered the cap and the back. Amazing. Let me just do a quick measurement. Let me measure one of those components on the board. And I'm gonna measure in diode mode to ground. So I'm gonna place my probe on ground, which is the bottom pin of the cap. And we're going to measure here. We have 0 0.527. We have no reading, oh well. We have 2.79. And we have 0. Okay. So if we read here, we do the same. If we measure here, 0 0.523, very nice. We have nothing. We have 2.5, 2.6, and we have zero. Amazing. Let's measure the top part. Zero point six, zero point six seven nine, zero point seven five five, and zero point eight three four. So we know all the pins are making a connection. Let's compare. 0 0.6, 0 0.675. We have 0 0.735 and we have 
0.829. So we know the chip is reading the same as the rest of the chips. And if we measure the cap in diode mode from here to here, we're getting 0.522. Let me measure this one. 0.522, exactly the same. And the same thing, we're gonna measure the resistance from here to here, just one more time. We already did, but we wanna do it one more time. We have 100 kilo ohms, and let's measure from here to here. And we have 100 kilo ohms, amazing. The measurements here are testing the same as here, are testing the same as here, here, and here. So all of them are testing exactly the same. And we are done. We're gonna invoice and mail this back to the customer. And we have another board from the same customer. This is a different board. It looks similar, but it's not. And we're gonna be working on this one next. So the Cessna aircraft motherboard is done. And it's up to whoever wanna authorize it to authorize if this board can go on the aircraft or not. We did replace the components with originals. Soldering is amazing. All the pins are making a connection and the pins are reading exactly the same as their neighboring brothers. I hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know what you think, leave it down in the comments. Don't forget to like and subscribe and we'll do something else in the next video. Just one final cleanup. Make it nice and shiny. We'll